Let's take a look at finding X intercepts on the um, the HP prime. And let's take a look at our first problem here. F of X equal 3X minus 1. Okay, so F of X is equal to 3X minus 1. Now remember, to find the X intercepts, you plug 0 in for the other variable. So we'll plug 0 in for Y. So this is really 0 is equal to 3x minus 1. That's going to become important in a second. Okay, we're going to go over to our calculator. Um, I'm under my apps uh, button. If you're not right here, you can press your apps and it brings you here. You want to highlight function, then press enter. And we're going to put in 3x minus 1 here. And press enter. And then we'll press plot. And that's going to be our graph. Now, our x-intercepts is where it crosses or touches the x-axis, which looks like we have 1 here, which is true for a line. Now, we're going to look a couple different ways of doing this and talk about the, the advantages uh, of each. If I press the menu, then this brings uh, this, this up. And if I press function, you see one of them says root. Root is uh, another word for zeros or another word for x-intercepts. Where it crosses, touches the x-axis. So I'm going to do an enter on the root. And it'll come back and tell us the root is 0.33333334, so forth. Now, this is in decimal. If I push my fraction button, see it does not change to um, a fraction. Uh, so that's a flaw. Well, I shouldn't say a flaw, but that's uh, the way that the root uh, function works. If you're happy with um, the decimal version then you know you have 0.33 and you can have put however many decimals going out like that um, I'm not sure why it's four there to be honest but this keeps going forever like that okay that's one way and you can click OK then to get out of that another way is we push the home button here I had to play with this a little bit myself so let me get rid of those so you don't look at those <laughs> okay um, now, once we're here, you press the uh, toolbox, and um, then you see there's an app, a math, uh, different functions you can choose, CAS. We go to app, and see under function, we see the root again. This is the one we just looked at. Well, um, what I did is I did a right arrow on the function to get to this. You see the root has the number 3 in front of it. So if I do 3, now it's asking to find the root of what? Well, we put our um, we put our function in F1. I push the symbol to get back to that. We go press the home now, and we want to put F1 here. So we go to vars function. So I press one for function. We want symbolic. So I press two, and the number that's uh, to the left, upper left of uh, what we want, we want F1 is one. So I push one, and then I'm gonna do a comma. And it's wanting us to put a guess in, uh, an x value close to our answer. So if I put 0 in and press enter, you see it gives us um, this right here. This is scientific notation. It says 3.3333 times 10 to the negative 1, which means 0.3333. So it's kind of a weird way of writing it. Um, if I press my fraction button, see what I get. I get 1 third. So this um, over here allows us to get the fraction. Now I know this was pretty simple. You could have sit there and solved that way long time ago for me so, uh, doing this on the calculator. But I'm just demonstrating a very simple one. How do you find the x-intercept? Okay, let's look at a little harder one. Let's look at this one. And we're going to see some flaws with this. It's our first one. Our second one. f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7, and we want to find the x-intercepts. Again, to find the x-intercepts, you plug 0 in for y, so we're really saying 0 is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7. Now, when you set it equal to 0, again, we're looking for where it's crossing the x-axis or touching the x-axis. So let's graph this. So I'm going to go to my symbol. I'll do a backspace to clean that out. And we got x squared, so press my x key, x squared minus 6x minus 7, and I press enter. Now let's just plot it to see what it looks like. 
Okay, we got one there, we got one there. Okay, I have no clue where my cursor's at. Uh, let me press my left arrow key, there it is. And you see a little dash right there, or plus, whatever that is, my eyes aren't very good. Okay, now that's right there, and it's closer to this one right here, which looks like negative one. If I push menu, and I choose function, and then I do enter on root, comes back and tells us our root is negative one. So it's telling us our first x intercept, our first uh, x intercept is negative one. Well, we can clearly see there's another one over here. What I want to do is I want to move my cursor over closer to that one. So I'll press my right arrow key over and over, or you can click and hold down on it. Although it starts picking up speed. There it is. And see, it's over closer to this one now. So now if I do function and do enter on root, it tells me uh, 7. Okay. Now that worked pretty well um, over here in the graphical interface on this one. Uh, you kind of have to know where, where your roots are in order to use the other function. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Okay. Well, let's go to home. So I'll press my home button. And I'm going to do root again. So I'm going to do my uh, toolbox. I want function, so I'll press right arrow on that. And I want uh, root, which is the third one. So you can down arrow to it and press enter on it, or just simply press the numbers in front of it. So I'll do three. And we want F1 again, so I'll do vars, one for function, two for symbolic. And I'm just pressing the numbers in front of each one. And then I want to choose one for F1. Now I need to put in a comma and then a guess. And, that, uh, and a guess is an X value close to what we're trying to find. Now it doesn't have to be right on top of it. We already said that our answer is negative 1. You know, if I put in negative 3, an X value close to it, and then push enter, comes back and tells us negative 1. Well, that's what we just found. No, no big deal there. Um, let me do it again. Do my toolbox, choose 1 for function, 3 for root. Then I'll go to my vars, one for function, two for symbolic, and one for um, F1. And I'll do a comma, and I want to do a guess. And over on this side, let me put 10 in for the guess and see what happens. Push enter. And see how we get 7. Um, the problem with this is that I, I have to kind of know where the answers are to begin with before I do this. Um, otherwise, I may guess... Um, negative 3 and then I may guess negative 2 and think my only root is negative 1. So very important you actually look at the graph and identify um, your roots before you, you go into that. Now let me go back to home. Let's say I, I didn't um, look real close and maybe I'm wondering is there something beyond negative um, 1? Is there something to negative 5 or negative 10 or negative 20? Well let me uh, do my toolbox Choose one for function, three for root. Let me put F1 in there. So do vars, one for function, two for symbolic, and one for F1, comma, and let me put in uh, negative 500. And push enter. Look what it found. It found negative one. That's the one closest to it. Um, Texas Instruments gets kind of confused when you go too far away from your answer. But uh, this calculator seems pretty good about it. I um, put in a really large value, real small value, and it seemed to find it. Now, one of the times I came up with a rounding error when I was playing with this earlier, I came up with 7.0000001. If you see something like that and it looks like 7, it probably is 7. Um, so you could go through and do the guesses as actually your answer and see if that uh, gives you the answer. Weird as that seems. Anyway, that's finding uh, x-intercepts on the uh, HP Prime calculator.